Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Halifax. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, thanks very much. I'm ready. So this bill that we have before us, um, I went to law school, I went to Dalhousie Law School and I started in 2001 and when I was there in my second year I got to take family law with the great Rolly Thompson, uh, one of the foremost thinkers on family law in Canada. Uh, if he's watching right now, he's laughing, laughing out loud at home because I said that. But he is. He's a great thinker when it comes to family law. And uh, I was really lucky to have a, a class, to be able to take that class with him. And one of the main, one thing that he drilled into our heads over and over and over again, yes, it's the law, but he made sure we fully understood what it meant, and that was the best interests of the child. Uh, and, and we talked about all different scenarios and we talked about different hypotheticals and what would you do? You have this case in front of you. You're a judge. How do you make that decision? And we talked about the best interests of the child because when it comes to conflict about custody and access in Canada, the paramount guiding principle under the Divorce Act and also in many of our pieces of provincial legislation under custody and access legislation, the paramount guiding principle is the best interest of the child. What does that mean? It doesn't mean mom. It doesn't mean dad. It doesn't mean grandparents. It's the best interests of the child. And I point out that it also doesn't mean children. Children uh, across the board. And that was a tricky thing for us to understand as law students. It wasn't what is the best for the children writ large? It was this child in front of you, this child who stood before you, who had a, a specific case, a specific family situation in a, in a different geographic area of Canada, different, all kinds of different <coughs> considerations, socioeconomic considerations, and it is about this child who is before us. And when we consider the best interests of this child who stands before us, there can be many different possibilities under the legislation. There can be um, equal time. Equal time is allowed under the Divorce Act. There can be sole custody by one parent with access by another parent. There can be sole custody by one parent and no access because maybe it is determined that in the best interests of this child, they should not have contact with a parent. There's all kinds of circumstances where that occurs. Shared custody is an option as well. And it is even possible to have a scenario where a child has a different set of circumstances than their sibling. So again, back to this idea, it's not about what is best for children. It is this child, not his or her brother, his or her sister, this child. And you know, it, it goes back to the idea that the most important thing that we are considering is this child who is standing before us. And that is the root of the law when we look at family law and we look at how we deal with custody and access. And I think it is beautiful. It's elegant. It's an elegant concept uh, that, that we go back. You know, let's forget about who lives where and who has more money or anything like that. What, what's the best scenario for this child? So the bill that's before us would instruct judges to find a presumption of equal sharing of parenting responsibilities. And this could be rebutted. It's a rebuttable pre presumption if uh, the other party or if a party can show that the best interests of the child would, otherwise, would be, quote, substantially enhanced to do otherwise. So even if I thought this bill was a good idea or, or changing this presumption, creating this rebuttable presumption, even if I thought that was a good idea, and I don't, and I'll explain why later. But even if I did, this is a significant departure from Canadian family law. Significant departure. Even if I thought this was a good idea, in no way could anyone think that something as significant as this concept, this reversal, this rebuttable presumption, no one could possibly think that this should be changed through a private member's bill. I know I'm talking process here, but process is important. For people who are at home, not everybody knows private members' legislation, uh, it's different. It, it gets very limited debate. There's two hours at second reading, there's maybe a, a couple of days of committee, and you think, oh, a couple of days, that's big. But no, a committee meeting is just two hours. And then there's two hours at third reading. So we're talking about four hours of debate in this house. That, you know, the best interests of the child is the cornerstone of our Federal Divorce Act. It's the cornerstone of our, of our custody and access laws provincially. It's also part of the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. This is something to which Canada is a signatory. And we can't possibly think that changing this concept 
would be, it would be sufficient to have four hours of debate. I mean, look, it's me. I'm, I'm speaking to this bill, the mover of the bill is speaking to this bill. There's a smattering of other MPs who are speaking tonight. That's it. We're just going to have this four hours of debate and we are going to, we can't think that there's enough thought or insight or discussion here tonight that, that could uh, support that this fundamental change to family law. So, but that's in the make-believe world where I think this is a good decision. Um, I don't support this bill. I don't support it in any way, shape, or form. Uh, thanks in large part to the, the constant drilling of best interests of the child by Rolly Thompson, my, my family law prof. Um, this is the most important concept. I'm going to quote the Canadian Bar Association here. The bill would represent a disservice to bo both to children and families by taking the focus away from children in favor of parental rights by detracting from the individual justice required by the Divorce Act, and by promoting further and more fractious litigation. Ah, litigation. Um, so we often hear about, uh, we need to change the, uh, the Divorce Act, we need to change this idea of best interest of the child because there's all this litigation and it's so difficult. Well, it is difficult. Of course it's difficult. But there are lots of avenues for parents to take so that they don't actually have to resort to litigation. And when the focus is on the best interests of the child, it makes parents take stock for a minute. Mm -hmm. It makes them take a deep breath and focus on their children rather than themselves. And with this concept, they are more likely to put aside their differences. They are more likely to put aside their self-interest and to work to a resolution that works for their family this bill would actually make that consideration of the child secondary. You can't support a law that's going to make the child second. Now, in coming up to this debate, I was contacted by a constituent of mine, and he asked me to support this bill. Uh, and he shared a heartbreaking story, a, a truly heartbreaking story of his situation with his ex-partner and uh, and kids, ex-spouse and kids, and he told me about how uh, sole custody was used as a weapon against him uh, and held out as a reward uh, for his ex-spouse. And we are contacted often by people who want us to support legislation or to not support it, to vote for or against. But the, his story really did stick with me. It's, it's a, it, was a, it was a very difficult story to read. But in looking at his situation, and there are always individual situations that don't, that don't fit or somehow don't work, but when I looked and he told me about everything that he had gone through, I couldn't help but think about how much different his situation would be if we had support for parents, if we had access to justice, if people could actually access the courts and have legal rep uh, representation. I think that the goal of this bill, which is co-parenting, it would be better served by greater funding for parental education, for access to justice, for access to legal representation, to counseling services. It would be better served by those things than it would by this bill. See, I don't have a lot of time left. I, when In doing research for this bill, uh, there's a fantastic uh, paper put together by the Canadian Bar Association uh, and it was about an, for a previous incarnation of this bill. And uh, I remember when, when this bill was first introduced, in, or maybe it wasn't first, but in the last parliament, I was deputy justice critic with uh, my colleague from Windsor Tecumseh, who was justice critic, and, and we met with lots of folks to talk about what the implications of this bill would be. And I will say this CBA discussion paper is fantastic. I wanted to quote from it, but I probably don't have a lot. I'm going to make one quote. I think i got 30 seconds. Um, they talk about this committee that existed in Parliament, a special joint committee on child access, custody and access. The committee recommended a series of criteria defining the best interests of the child, among which would be the principle that children benefit from consistent, meaningful contact with both parents, except in exceptional cases, such as those where violence has occurred and continues to pose a risk to the child. Whether an equal time-sharing arrangement is in the interest of a particular child would have to be determined on a case-by-case -case basis with a full evaluation of the child's and parent's circumstances. And so the committee said, 
that the, Im the legislation that imposes or presumes joint custody as the automatic arrangement for divorcing families would ignore that this might not be suitable for all families, especially those with a history of domestic violence or very disparate parenting roles. I know my time's up. Thanks for uh, being a little bit lenient, I think.